Uh, meaningful use really does set the stage for the use of analytics to transform healthcare. I think the first question that we want to ask ourselves is, what do we mean by analytics? At SAS, what we're talking about in terms of analytics is we don't mean simply reporting, which is the way that some other companies think about analytics. We're really thinking about predictive modeling and future-based forecasting, so true analytics and the way that we can apply them. SAS has been the number one leader in healthcare analytics and has been the leader in multiple other fields as well over the years. What we've learned actually in there is whether it's in the gaming industry or whether it's in retail or whether it's in healthcare, is it's all going to start with data. And uh, an example that I'd give is if you're familiar with the movie 21 or if you're familiar with Moneyball, in the end, what transforms those situations is understanding the data and looking for patterns in those data. And what we're really doing in healthcare is we're starting from that foundation, taking data, interpreting the data, understanding it, understanding what we've done in the past, but perhaps more importantly, we're really trying to look about what we can do in the future and identify opportunities for improvement. That's really what we're all about. You know, all the time physicians, and I'm a physician myself, is that we're, we're left in the dark too many times in the, in the blind patient encounter. I'm working with patients trying to figure out information that is not readily available to me and trying to make critical decisions with data that really needs to be made available. And so I, I think that not only at a clinical level but at an organizational level, it's very, very difficult to move ahead if you don't have all of the right insights. There's good information that would show that um, any individual human being, myself included, is we're not capable of processing more than about seven pieces of data at any one time. And so that even if I have the information available, now I need to be able to interpret those data. And so I think that the opportunity there is that healthcare analytics can take the burden of data assembly from an individual clinician, help them to synthesize that and present options to them to be able to leverage their own expertise to make the right decision based on the choices that are made available to them. And if we look at existing healthcare payment models, the one thing that we've seen is that that leads to uh, the train wreck and the situation that we're in right now. We're spending $3 trillion on healthcare and we're spending somewhere in the region of 16 to 17% of GDP on healthcare at a growth rate that is outstripping uh, the, the rate of growth in the economy. And that's not sustainable. What we know is that by 2024, Medicare will be bankrupt. And this is all associated with existing payment models. So the system is not sustainable even today with today's payment models. And we need better insights into how we can thrive in the existing system, which is pay for, pay for volume. But as we move forwards, pay, where we end up getting paid for value, value is only going to be able to be interpreted through the use of analytics. So I think that certainly today in today's model, we can do a lot better with analytics by understanding what we're doing today and understanding what we could do in the future to operate more effectively. But I think that where the, where the, the real writing is on the wall is that we're going to be transforming those types of reimbursement structures to payment for value. The buzzword is analytics. And I think that what that really signifies is that healthcare organizations have recognized the fact that as emerging payment models that are going to reward quality over volume, value over volume, is that they're really not prepared today to answer those challenges. Uh, at SAS, one of the things that we did over the last three months is that we undertook some uh, very, very deep research with over 65 uh, senior executives from healthcare organizations around the country just to get a pulse on what they feel are really the big pressures that they're facing into. And clearly, there were the pressures around achieving meaningful use, making sure that they were ready for healthcare reform, ICD-10 or whatever is going to happen in relation to that, and we heard news about this this week. But as they think about healthcare reform, the writing is on the wall there that they're going to start to bear risk. And every C-suite person that we spoke to said, I don't have the right tools in place today, and I know that the type of tools that I need are going to be those that give me a much more comprehensive view of the entire population of care, the entire organization, and as my organization grows, those challenges are going to increase. And they're coming to us and turning to us and saying, we understand that requires more than looking in the rearview mirror with traditional business intelligence tools. It requires that what we do is look forward into the future and understand how we're going to survive in two, three, four years' time, and ideally, not just survive, but thrive in a changing healthcare world. Essentially, when we say, do, do we have a health, an economic problem in this country, the reality is we have a healthcare problem in this country, and the daunting challenges that lie ahead of us are numerous. I'd say one of them, we hear all about this, is big data. There is more data available in healthcare than we can deal with. And by data, I mean the volume of data, 
the velocity of data uh, that is coming into the system and the value that we could extract from the data. Big data in healthcare is a huge issue with a poster child for what we could do there. We think about genomic information flooding into the healthcare record, uh, data sets that we've never traditionally imagined using, behavioral data sets, socioeconomic data sets, and supplementing that with electronic records that are coming online. We have a big data challenge like we've never seen before. And let's face it, healthcare organizations and healthcare providers are going to take on risk. And as they do that, they're going to be looking for some unnatural partnerships, perhaps, unnatural bedfellows. So we'll see provider organizations partner with other provider organizations, extend their, their reach. They'll also start to work with uh, other types of organizations. You'll see more payer provider collaboration and even provide a pharma collaboration. So we're seeing the opportunity there for convergence between traditionally siloed businesses, siloed data sets, and as we pull all of those in pieces of information together, how can we generate a win-win where each of the players in that equation understand transparently the data, the measures that are being used to measure success, and that really is going to rely on analytics to get that level of transparency for us to have a win-win relationship in healthcare where we can lower costs and improve quality at the same time and not just get a win-win for the providers and the payers but get a win for the patient.